A typical small wastewater stabilization pond system includes an anaerobic pond where primary treatment occurs, and facultative pond where secondary treatment occurs, and a storage pond. Anaerobic ponds are designed to allow physical settling of solids, retention of floatables such as oils and greases, and to enhance the actions of the anaerobic microorganisms usually found in wastewater. Anaerobic ponds are typically constructed to provide a depth of wastewater of about 3 to 3.5 meters. The heavy solids from the raw wastewater settle to the bottom of the anaerobic ponds and are slowly digested by the anaerobic bacteria. The organic material is converted by these bacteria to carbon dioxide, nitrogen, organic acids, and methane gas. Now on to facultative ponds. These ponds are designed to enhance the breakdown of suspended organic matter by both aerobic and anaerobic processes. These ponds are typically about 1.5 meters in depth. The aerobic bacterial process occurs near the surface of these ponds while anaerobic back breakdown occurs at the bottom of these ponds. Now onto storage ponds. A typical storage pond is designed to have a one year retention time with a depth of around three meters. These ponds are considered larger than the faculty of ponds and provide additional time for the breakdown of organic matter and reduction in pathogenic organisms. The biological processes taking place in the storage ponds are similar to those taking place in a facultative pond, where the effluent is released from the storage pond and the product will be polished to a quality similar to leaving a secondary or tertiary mechanical wastewater treatment plant. So now we're just gonna talk about um, a few issues that we have observed, or you may have observed in wastewater lagoons. Weeds and long grass. Banks need to be mowed and weeded regularly. Duckweed, watermill, and hyacinths that grow on the water surface should be physically removed often from a boat with a tool like a rake or a skimmer. Blue-green algae. Unlike green algae, this algae is stringy and can clump, block sunlight, and cause short circuiting. It can dominate lagoons with conditions are poor, when pH is low or when protozoa eat all the green algae. Blue-green algae can physically be, be removed like duckweed. Algae blooms. After periods of cloudy weather or abrupt temperature changes, algae can multiply quickly and then die off. Matted algae on the surface can block sunlight and cause foul odors and should be broken up with a boat using a rake or dispersed. Odors. Lagoons may have odors occasionally from algae blooms, anaerobic conditions, scum, and turnover of these lagoon contents after thawing. Proper, or, proper operation and maintenance can help prevent these odors. Short circuiting. Dead spots in a flow pattern due to obstructions in the lagoon or the wind on the surface can cause wastewater to leave the lagoon too quickly, resulting in inadequate treatment. Erosion. Controlling burrowing animals around the lagoon can help prevent erosion of the banks and dikes. Installing a stone or rock surface called a riprap along the bank, banks and dikes can help in some of these cases. Burrowing animals. Muskrats and other burrowing animals can be discouraged by weeding and mowing lagoon banks or berms. Alternately, raising and lowering water levels can drive out muskrats who, li who like their tunnels partially submerged. Otherwise, animals can be trapped and relocated. And lastly, sludge accumulation. Sludge in the bottom of, of the lagoons should be measured at least once per year and removed as needed. 